call for this meeting to order. Um, Would you please join me in saluting the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Stay standing. Oh, oh sure. Um, I just want to um, stay standing and take a moment of silence for um, the death of longtime um, football coach and friend Amon Colombo. Um, Amon was obviously a big reason why. Um, Brockton is known as the City of Champions. Um, I had the pleasure of working with Mr. Colombo my first three years as an administrator. Brockton High was his last three as a teacher. Um, he retired in 2003, came to Brockton as a teacher in 1969. As you know, he's a Brockton High graduate in 1949 and a life lifelong Brockton resident in uh, Brocktonian. So um, we mourn the loss of a great friend uh, and champion. So I want to take a moment to recognize Armin Colombo. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Colombo. We, um, we obviously um, lost a great champion of the city. Um, and I think there are other people here on the committee that have known uh, Coach Colombo for a long time. Uh, if anyone would like to say a few words, now might be an appropriate time. Um, Mr. Gormley. Thank you, Mr. Uh, yes, I've known, I known, I've known Armand uh, since I was 14. Um, when I started at, as a student at Brockton High School, um, I played one year of JV football and got to play under him. I wasn't very good. Yeah. <laughs> but he never, he never treated anybody any differently. Um, he made me feel like I was a part of the team even though I didn't play. Um, but as I got older, I ended up moving to his street. Uh, he built the first house on Southland Terrace. Um, and raised all of his children there and um, became a good friend of mine over the years. He was uh, one of the people that encouraged me to run for school committee and uh, always signed my nomination papers first. Um, and he also encouraged me to um, make some changes when I brought forth the idea to change um, the administrative restriction on coaching that came from him. Uh, despite what some people may think. Um, that rule was created because of Armin, and it always stuck in his craw. Uh, and I was really proud that we were able to get some movement on that, and it should be resolved uh, hopefully pretty soon. Um, he was just a great guy. You know, anybody that knew him, you, if, to know him was to love him. I, d I don't know anybody that didn't like him. Um, so it, it was very sad, but it was very nice to see everybody at his wake and a lot of my former teammates and, and players, and uh, he really touched a lot of people, and um, he really is, to me, the greatest Brocktonian. I, I met Coach Colombo when I attended Brockton High School, and um, one thing about Coach Colombo was that he, he loved his family, but he always made students and players, um, even if you didn't play for him, um, he made everyone feel like you were part of his family. And, and I think that um, goes a long way. Um, so we are going to, go, this city is going to miss him and um, um, we wish the very best for all of his family and, and friends and um, you know, may, he, may he rest in peace. And um, the next school committee meeting on the 20th, um, there'll be a presentation. Uh, Peter Colombo will be here. Um, hopefully, uh, Betty Colombo will be here and some other members of the family will be um, doing a presentation um, uh, to the Colombo family. Wonderful. Um, okay, the, um, the second item is the hearing of visitors. We do not have any this evening, so we will move to the consent agenda. The consent agenda is the regular bundling of routine matters that the school committee uh, considers and um, reviews. Is there any item that any particular member would like to uh, remove and speak about individually? No? Okay, may I please have a motion then on the consent agenda? Motion to approve A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. As written. A second. Any further discussion? All in favor? 
Okay. Communication, uh, Mr. Thomas, reporter, superintendent of schools. I see you are filling in for Superintendent Smith. Yes, thank you. Uh, Superintendent Smith is uh, at the conference um, for school committees, I believe, um, down, uh, down the Cape. So first I want to welcome Jayla Smith, uh, new Brockton High School um, student representative on the school committee, so we're going to let her get settled in and then um, she's going to give us a report. So we welcome and thank you for being here tonight. Good evening, Jayla. How are you? I'm good. Good. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself, what year you are, and what uh, you're involved with at the high school? Um, I'm a senior this year, and I'm a student athlete. I play soccer and basketball. I'm a part of the National Honor Society. I'm a part of the Senior Executive Committee also. And this year I'm hoping to try out for the tennis team too, so hopefully I'll make that. Yeah. It's wonderful. It seems like you are taking full advantage of all the different um, opportunities at Brockton High. Yes. And this is a very busy year for you because you also have to, you know, plan for next year. Yes. What, uh, what, what, uh, what's on the um, horizon or what do you want to be on the horizon? Um, for right now, I don't know what I, like, what school I want to choose to go to next year, but I know I want to, like, follow the path to become a podiatrist. Wonderful. Wow, that's great. Good aspirations. <laughs> Thank you. So, well, welcome aboard. Thank you. Okay. Um, Mr. Thomas? Jay, is there anything you want to share with us about the goings on at BHS tonight? Um, it's just, it's fun. This year, this year and last year, honestly, have been like, you could notice a change in the students. I think it's especially because of Dr. Mari. Like, he's changed a lot. And I'm not saying that just because he's sitting right there, but he's, like, honestly, like, the students all love him. Like, I never hear a bad thing about him, and, like, everyone just seems happier to come to school. Like, you like your doctor, Murray, <laughs> no, he didn't. Special cafeteria <laughs> privileges? No, or, no, no. Or he's bringing back the big chocolate chip cookies or something? No. Is there something going on that we need to know about? <laughs> no. All right, well, if there is, you, come, you just come and talk to us, okay? Uh, okay. All right. Um, anything coming up in terms of like at the high school, any events or anything that um, we... Um, the boys have a soccer game tomorrow night, so oh. hopefully they win that and another state champ, champ you know. Okay, great. Yep. All righty. Um, next item. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. So next I want to invite up our bilingual department head, Kelly Jones, and I want to invite up Dr. David Almeter. Are you? <coughs> Good to see you. So, so they're going to update us on the um, uh, Cape Verdean Teacher Exchange Program. Yes. So we welcome you and thank you for being here tonight. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Um, so you. a few years ago, uh, we participated in a, a cross-departmental um, institutional team to explore partnerships and experiences for our educators to learn uh, the systems of other of other countries. About 60% of our our English learner population are f are from Cape Verde. So and Brockton has a very long uh, connection to the country of Cabo Verde. Dr. Almeida from the College of Education, Special Education Department in the it, College of it's, Education. It's a long title. It really is, yeah. Uh, at Bridgewater State University, uh, we've worked together to uh, foster a a teacher exchange where one of our teachers would go over stay with a teacher in that country uh, and then they would come back and come and visit our schools so it was approved a, f a few years ago but due to some logistical challenges we were not unable to um, follow through on the exchange process we're we're very hopeful that that 2019 is the year that we'll be able to uh, launch the exchange program. Uh, there is an application process that has been vetted through the system's attorneys 
to ensure that, that there's a, a process in place for applicants to participate in it. We've sent you a, a, a two-page kind of overview of the program, and we're just here to answer any questions about it. You want no, anything? Uh, no, that was great. Thanks. Any questions at all about anything as minor or as major? With regard to the exchange of, of professional uh, teachers, um, would it be a language teachers or a, what, um, you know, what um, area would it be? The criteria right now are really teachers who um, are, are, are the professional development partnership schools with Bridgewater, Bridgewater. State. Okay. So they have a long relationship uh, in terms of professional development and hosting um, staff from Bridgewater State and their university. So um, those those schools that it's open to are Raymond, the Raymond Gilmore, yeah. yep. uh, Davis, Davis uh, East, and East. I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. And in Cape Verde, uh, it's open to any elementary teacher that the Ministry of Education would like to nominate to come. So. so our goal is to try to have it in place for the start of school next year? Is that so it's only a week-long exchange program. Oh, it's not a year-long? No. Oh, no. I thought this was like a year-long program, <laughs> a, a real... No. The beauty oh. of this is it's, it's, the, it's a week-long, I don't know what you call experience, I think mm. is the, the way we, we like to talk about it. It's a week-long experience where the teacher comes teacher from Cape Verde comes to Brockton, stays with a Brockton teacher, shadows the Brockton teacher all day at school for a week, and then at the end of the week, they both fly back to Cape Verde, and the Brockton teacher stays with the um, teacher from Cape Verde. She shadows the Cape Verde teacher all week, and then she comes back. So the beauty of it is it's, between, it's, in, it's on April vacation, so we, we don't need substitute teachers for anybody, which is really good. Cape Verde's uh, vacations is staggered from, it's one week, either one week previous or one week after the, the Brockton School's uh, April vacation. So the cost is minimal. Uh, it's, it's basically a round trip plane ticket, and that's it because the Brockton teacher hosts the Cape Verdean teacher, the Cape Verdean teacher hosts the Brockton teacher, and it's reciprocal. I think I'd be more in favor of it if there's also a component where a school committee person gets to go as well, <laughs> yeah, uh, well and we, we can, can exchange school. You know, <laughs> we can work on that. Yeah, yeah, it's a that would be idea. good. So that way we can see how they manage their system and we manage our system. So we actually are trying to get some Brockton teachers to be able to go. Um, about five years ago, I took Boston teachers, and we went into schools and talked to teachers and administrators, met with the Minister of Education. So we'd like to do that with Brockton at some point. Someone where? Oh, okay. Um, it sounds like a wonderful idea. I mean, I think that we can certainly learn from each other and, and um, you know, just a good opportunity for, uh, you know, exchange of ideas and certainly, you know, see if there's practices that uh, could be helpful to them and practices that could be helpful to us. So, right. um, you know, it's obviously a win-win. Um, and, and the selected teacher, I'm sure, would be willing to come back and share her experiences with yeah. you all after the, uh, ex oh, after I would, the I think that would exchange be great. program. Yeah. And we've also built in that, that the teacher that goes to Cape Verde will also do professional development once she comes back here within her school building. Good. Great. Uh, Mr. Sullivan, did you have your hand up? Yeah, I was just wondering. What about the, uh, like the food and the hotel? Yeah, all, all of that is reciprocal. And so whoever decides to apply and then gets selected, they will have to be willing to pay for food and, I mean, entertainment if they want to go out to a movie or something. But, you know, it's mostly coming home from school, watching each other all day, coming home from school, having dinner together, talking about school. It, it's, it's a very warm, uh, close relationship that will, I think will develop. I'm hoping will develop. Um, oh, it sounds like it will. I think so. so you know, if, if you apply, it's with the understanding that you have to host the Cape Verdean teacher. And if that Cape Verdean teacher applies, it's with the understanding that you have to host her when, when you go back to Cape Verde. So it, it, the costs are basically the same for, the, for each teacher. Right. So there's no extra cost as None. far as food or None. laundry? Or Nothing. And they stay in the, their house? Yes. And that's for free? Mm -hmm. Both? Both. Wow. 
It's a good idea. Thank you. <laughs> and then I think they're going down to Florida to your house, Mr. Sullivan. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 like I said, it's a win-win. Yeah. I heard the next school committee treat was at Mr. Sullivan's <laughs> yeah. house in Florida. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else? No? I, I just want to say, Dr. Almeida, we obviously the Brockton Public Schools appreciates their partnership with Bridgewater State. Uh, nice continue for so many programs yeah. and initiatives. So, as always, we thank you and Bridgewater State for the partnership. It's always been great. You're, you're welcome, but our students grow immensely by coming into Brockton yeah. schools. And, and the Brockton teachers, I teach a course, a week long course in, uh, in reading for special educators. I teach it at the Gilmore School on the Gilmore School property and the students, my students get to go out right in the Gilmore School and work with kids there and then come back to the class and talk about what they, what they learned <coughs> from the students that are there. So it's, 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 a, it's, great. it's a two way street. Yep. So we thank you in Brockton as well. No, thank you, you're welcome, it's great. We've talked a little bit about it before at school committee meetings where um, we are very appreciative of the fact that you know, we have a lot of students as you know who um, you know, first time students go into college and aren't exposed to, you know, university or college life and, you know, just having the opportunity to attend a program, you know, at your uh, university um, opens, opens eyes, you know, it, it opens opportunities and, um, you know, puts positive ideas in our students' mind in terms of their future and what, what, what you know, what there is out there beyond, you know, you know, the the confinements of their own elementary school right. or whatever it is. I mean, here you are visiting, you know, Bridgewater State University, and, and I think one of the big things they loved was the um, cafeterias. You know, yeah, they uh, love the student, that. Yeah, yeah. And, in, in the in the <laughs> summer they have the bridge program and the footbridge yeah. program. I've right. taught in the footbridge program, but they just the nuts in the cafeteria. <laughs> the kids are they're just like this is so much fun. I, I, I can remember when I was um, in the fifth grade my teacher over the Ashfield, Mary Del Sordo, she was a graduate of Stonehill and for one field trip she brought the whole class over to Stonehill College and um, it, it, it was eye-opening for me. I still remember it to this day. What you was know, her name? Mary Del Sordo. I, um, if she she had a, I taught at Stonehill for 16 years yeah. so I'm well, I she, probably she was a, a, a teacher at the, element, at the elementary level, and then she became a principal here in, in the Brockton Public Oh, School. she was a student teacher of mine. Oh, okay. Yeah. She was. <laughs> Not that I'm getting any older. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it's just a great opportunity for the kids. It, it, it exposes them to things they never would be exposed to, and it, um, I think, plants the seed you know, of you know, a future, you know, future plans and future opportunity. Um, it's, you know, it, there, there's no downside to it. It's, it's just, you know, the potential to, uh, you know, expand, you know, one's small little world and, and make it bigger and, and think I can be there and I'd love to come here and, you know, pursue whatever it is, sure. you know, in the future. And we'd so, love to have them. Yeah. So, so thank you very much. You're very welcome. Very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Next, I would like to invite up Dr. Murray. Uh, he's gonna, going to introduce um, a video that was made, um, kind of like a, almost like a recruitment video of um, um, showing students the um, great things that happen at Brockton High School. So it's called uh, YBHS. So I'll have Dr. Murray talk about it, then we'll get out of the way so we can watch it. Not too long. Um, so thank you for having me. First of all, I want to make just a quick comment about this bit. Very modest. Uh, she's not only on the soccer team, but a captain. And I think more importantly, very representative of the student body with her volunteer work. She volunteers at the uh, Project Grads daycare, uh, volunteers as a coach for uh, Brockton Youth Soccer, and also volunteers in our school store and as one of the announcers. So she's uh, incredibly modest. And although I haven't paid her yet for her comments earlier, I, I believe she has a bank now. So. But um, very typical of the students and their involvement, not only in athletics. She has a very uh, demanding academic load. As she explained, she is thinking about med school. So uh, very typical. The video you're going to watch, uh, we have talked uh, for a couple years about trying to create something with a little more of a contemporary look and feel to it. We have a second year teacher in our uh, television studio. And, Mr. Halko, with uh, the assistance of his students and Ms. Richards, our 
art director created this uh, video that we used for our eighth grade orientation and actually are hoping to use on our TVs in the building and uh, ship to the middle school so that they can show this video as well. I, I think it's, again, a very nice representation of a very wide cross-section of young men and women that are uh, fun to be around and are very serious about their community and their school. So without further ado, here we go. So that's our first attempt. It's uh, trying to do something we thought we maybe could get on cable and uh, use in some of our visits to some of the middle schools, uh, a little up-tempo and uh, student-driven. Student so that was created all in the TV studio with uh, students. So some of them actually in the video, but a lot of them behind the scenes. I thought that was great. Well, you know, it, it really shows, uh, you know, a, a big, you know, a vast cross-section of what goes on at the school, you know, all the good things that we know are there and um, it's, it's great to have people be able to you know see it and you know market it to you know the middle school levels you know to make sure those students understand what there is at, at, at the high school and um, it's, it's just a, it was a nice piece yeah Good. very nice thank you I, I thought you looked pretty sharp there. Yeah, the yeah that was not that was not part of the planning. I, I noticed that uh, nice dark suit and yeah, the, the, the red tie. Yeah, yeah so <laughs> it's the hair gets them every time. <laughs> we do have some other things happening this week and next week. Uh, tomorrow is our Veterans Day celebration, so if there are any veterans watching, they have some time tomorrow from 9:30 to 11:30. They're more than welcome. Mr. McCrina and the band put on a very special performance along with some. Uh, touching words from Lieutenant uh, Colonel Clark, and then we have some guests as well. It's very meaningful. A lot of students uh, participate and attend. Um, next week we have our National Honor Society induction, which is always uh, 
very exciting as we usually have scores of students uh, receiving that. And then the following week, right before Thanksgiving, we will be handing out our Abigail Adams uh, Scholarship Award winners in last year's class garnered approximately 292 uh, scholarships. So we have a lot of things to celebrate and to look forward to in the next couple of weeks. That's wonderful. I know um, a lot of our students uh, benefit from that scholarship who attend the you know, UMass system, uh, you know, whatever state school they choose to go to. It's obviously a benefit that flows um, with them to whatever you know, UMass uh, facility campus they go to, so that's great. Um, uh, Mr. Gormley, I saw your hand. Yes, uh, I would. I really liked the video. I thought it was well put together, and um, I'd love to see it either condensed version or a new spot to be uh, played on TV. I've seen Zavarian and Cardinal Spellman uh, having spots, um, and I think Southeastern too on TV. So um, I think that that's something that we would probably have to discuss as a committee, but. Um, it's getting competitive out there, the, uh, our, and our students are uh, prize commodities to some schools. So it'd be great to definitely great to have some advertising out there. I think that's what this was born from. Actually, if yeah. uh, one of us was in the South Shore Plaza last fall, and they had a big Zavarian <laughs> advertisement, and uh, we're easily as competitive in the classroom and on the athletic fields and in the concert halls as that building. So. We wanted to showcase just a small little portion of that in that video. Mr. D'Agostino. Uh, again, just kind of piggybacking off of Mr. Gormley's comments that, you know, I thought the video was well done and, and we've all kind of, there's been a lot of talk, I think, in the last few years about the fact that we need to make a better effort to market Brockton High and all that it has to offer. Because again, even some of the outside towns are marketing for our kids to go there. No and doubt. You know, I mean, so there, as Mr. Gormley said, there's a lot of competition now, but I think, you know, it's been talked about a lot, and I like to see that we're, you know, moving forward with it, and um, and I like the idea that this is a, a video that you can put out there, because more and more on online, it's the clicking videos, watching videos, you know, that mm -hmm. um, is more attractive, um, you know, to a lot of people who are looking at things online rather than, you know, maybe reading something or... Correct. You know, yep. so I, I, but it was really well done. So. Good. Well, I'll make sure they know. I thought so. I also would suggest, um, you know, as, as a marketing uh, tool that, you know, we have a planetarium. We have right. our own swimming pool. We have a baseball stadium pretty much on site, you know, right. you know that no other, you know, a high school around here can compare to. We have a hockey rink right on right. campus, too. So, I mean, uh, it would this, be great this was for done it. very quickly. Oh yeah, no, and, all uh, I'm just saying is we, those are we great talked things. about yeah. how we would actually maybe do a video that would have um, a little less student interaction, perhaps, but give a broader overview of the facilities. Mm -hmm. We have some amazing biotech labs yeah. uh, downstairs, along with the robotics. Yeah. Um, you know, we have some biology classrooms with all kinds of very uh, fascinating uh, uh, animals and displays, and then of course the fine arts wing really uh, that that video doesn't give it justice mm. so um, there are certainly some other things in the works but we we thought we'd try that at least with our uh, eighth graders here in town so yeah oh, that's great yeah. really good there's a lot of positive things up there on this camp no, on that no campus doubt. so thank you dr Murray. Uh, appreciate welcome. it thank you next i'll invite up aldo petronio to give us a quick update on advocacy and <laughs> where we are right now. Good evening. As we continue to advocate for school funding, uh, we continue to meet with our state delegation, uh, pushing for the acceptance of the Foundation Budget Review Commission's report um, you know, concerning the appropriate funding for Brockton schools. As you know, that report came out almost four years ago at this point. And since then, the state legislature has made very little movement in um, taking all those recommendations and implement them. them. Uh, recently, the Mass Budget Policy Center in Boston, an independent group, came out with a report that said, if the state were to implement all of that funding, Brockton alone would receive $49 million in one year of an increase if we to follow that formula. So uh, the, the state knows they have to move on this. 
Um, we in turn want to keep pressure on the state to move on this for the funding. We've been working with MASS, which is a superintendent association. They have a consultant. Um, we have various legal firms that are getting involved um, to, to help move our case forward with uh, in-house doing research and providing them with data that they need for this case. Um, as you know, we've done a tale of two cities, and then we've done a tale of four cities. From that, many other cities are now contacting us, cities and towns, asking to get involved and would like to you know, get the same data on their cities to see um, basically how behind they are in the formula for funding that they should receive. So our next uh, step on that is to meet with the southeastern mass area, you know, Fall River, New Bedford area, and then after that go up to like the North Shore area and meet with districts up there. And it's not just the urban districts, we're meeting with everyone, trying to get everyone involved in this. So the governor's budget comes out in the end of January. Right after October 1, they start formulating the budget. You know, they look at the numbers and who has what students across the state. So it's important that we keep the pressure on and we keep um, letting them know that we're watching this and we want them to put the appropriate funding in. So um, basically, the, the advocating is continuing. Uh, our state reps and our uh, state senator are all back uh, reelected in office and they know the, the push that we're making. So we're just pushing forward with that. Board of Ed meeting, the governor had requested through, I think, Secretary Pizer recommendations on um, implementing the foundation budget review or something along those lines, which I thought was pretty funny because he can just do it. <laughs> Correct. Well, the, 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 the fact that it's short by $2 billion yeah. is what's really has them dragging their feet because they, they say they don't know how to pay for it. Yet the governor's ads, as you all saw on TV, so they had a surplus of one billion last year. So we know we're not going to get to two billion overnight, but they can start putting more into the budget than they have been. Yeah, I just wanted to say, Aldo, that uh, I was with you and Mr. Thomas about two weeks ago. We went to the Holyoke. Holyoke, yes. And a uh, long ride up there. I didn't believe it was so far. <laughs> But we made pretty good time. We did. <laughs> we had a good driver. <laughs> but anyway, your, your, the speeches you made up there were fabulous. And uh, as well as you and the superintendent, I mean, you're really advocating this, trying to get that approved. Thank and you. it's not just for Brockton. It's for all the cities and towns involved. Exactly. Exactly. The, the formula, they, they say, is broken. The formula has just never kept up with inflation, especially health insurance costs, retirement costs, and special aid costs that has not kept up with it. And really what we're asking for is that they keep up with inflation and give us the appropriate funding for it. There's not much more to ask. It, I just wanted to say you're doing a real good job as well Thank as you. Mr. Thomas and the superintendent. With Thank 023, nothing would happen. Thank you. And thanks, Thank for, you. thanks for coming with us. You kind of made the point that I wanted to make with they're talking about how state revenues are up and there's surplus, but so now it's time to fix it. Now that the governor's put that out publicly in an election year, I, I can't imagine any excuse, any valid excuse not to make some progress. I think, like you said, nobody's expecting them to spend $2 billion next year, but Correct. start to phase in you know, some changes that fix what we've been dealing with the last three or four years. You know, you can't go on TV and brag about all this surplus you've created and then cry poor mouth when it's time for school funding. At this, I think the cat's out of the bag, if you will. At my state conferences for school business officers, I don't know, a couple months ago, I basically made the statement that $400 million a year over five years catches us up. We'll be a little behind because of inflation at that point. But right now, they barely give us $100 million more a year, barely. Right. So really what they need to do is multiply that by four. So if they have the state surplus, we're asking for, what, 40% of it, but right. send it our way where it needs to go. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Petroni. Mr. Thomas? Okay, then um, quickly a safety and security update. Um, by the time we get into um, Christmas uh, break, the holiday uh, break, we will have um, the new entrances will be finished at West in the Kennedy School like we have at East and Downey and Davis and Raymond. Um, 
So those will be installed and ready to go by the time students come back after the, uh, the holiday break. Um, if you've noticed, if anybody has been by the guarded school, which obviously is now closed, but we still have control of the Brockton Police, Brockton Fire Department, and Brewster Ambulance have been working over there um, together on um, drills, on response to active shooter training. Um, it's a joint effort between the um, fire department, the police department, and Bruce the ambulance, and um, how you approach a situation. Obviously, it has the police going in and doing what they need to do, and then quickly getting the fire department in to obviously, um, you know, um, respond to injured people as they go in. So it's um, the equipment they have is amazing. It's new equipment that they're, that they're dealing with. Um, body armor, body gear, so um, they're over there all this week and uh, two or three days uh, next week, so it's fortunate that we've been able to um, maintain the guarded school as far as, um, you know, just, you know, the heat's on low, um, but and we maintain the building so they can conduct these kind of drills during the day and, and train pretty much the whole department, both departments, the fire department and the police department. So. Um, that's going on this week and it's, it's really going well and the schools continue to um, to conduct their lockdown and stay in place drills um, all the time we we did the bus drills in october bus evacuation drills they'll continue again in in april so uh, again um, unfortunately things we, we have to plan for we plan for and we train for and we'll, we continue to do that uh, and not stop so i just want to give you a quick update on that Thank you. Any questions? Mr. Sullivan. I don't know if you can update us a little bit on the uh, paint in the traffic lines crossing the schools, or is that Yeah, that's actually, um, they've approved us to help them with doing the um, crossing, the crosswalks in, on the streets, the main streets in front of us, some of our schools. We wanted to start some of that painting last Saturday. Uh, it, you know, have the weather has to be just right. Um, and we may have to make sure we have a police detail that blocks one side of the street so people don't drive over the lines. It's quick drying paint, so it usually dries within 10 minutes, but you can't paint it and then leave it. So, um, and then unfortunately last Saturday it poured. So we're hoping Poor again. Yeah, we're hoping again to, to plan it for this Saturday because you have to have a detailed officer. Um, so again, we're going to try to um, do the crosswalks in, in, on the, um, in front of the schools on the busy streets, like North Quincy, Pearl, um, Oak, those, and we'll do that in the fall and continue to do it into the, um, in the spring when the weather breaks again. Is that going to be white or different colors? They'll, um, they'll be white. Uh, they'll be white, but um, again, they're going to let us do the ladder uh, design so you have the lines that go through the middle so they're easier um, to see. Oh, you spot that a mile away? Yeah. So we'll continue to work, and hopefully the weather cooperates. Nice job. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, unfinished business? Um, well, we uh, had a meeting, obviously, about the superintendent's contract. Um, uh, I was going to schedule another meeting on that for this Tuesday. Um, Tuesdays are usually a good night for us. Um, there's nothing else scheduled. And um, um, Wanda provided us with last year's evaluation and a blank with respect to this year's evaluation. So um, this could give us an opportunity to um, talk about all these um, questions and ratings together and, and perhaps even put together a, um, um, a, a, a joint response uh, with all of us um, uh, commenting in terms of uh, you know each of the different criteria, um, Wanda is going to be present for that meeting. The superintendent would will not be. Um, basically, it's our meeting uh, to go over you know, the information in terms of evaluating uh, her performance. So, um, what time would work for everyone? Six, six thirty. Six. six? Okay. So why don't we try for six o'clock um, here? Do you think or? Where would you like to do it? Um, it doesn't matter. It was suggested in her conference room. Oh, okay. That's fine. Okay. Um, oh, is this something new? This no, this is, we did this one last year. Yeah, I had the one. It's different than the one we had the other night. 
this is this is no this is the this is this this is the same exact uh, tool. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, all right. So we can do that, and then I think. Um, um, well, that's old business. Any, anything else under old business? No? Okay, so new business. I know that um, um, we needed to schedule another subcommittee meeting for, uh, did you mention the 26th? Or? Well, yeah, we're trying to look at the 26th for the curriculum. Okay. Um, can people just take a quick look at their calendars while we're here and just see if the 26th might be a, a doable evening? Um, that would probably be here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't be available until after seven that night. Could, could you be available before seven? I might be about ten minutes late, but. Okay. All right. We start at seven. Uh, why don't we start at seven fifteen? Seven fifteen, so Mark can be here on time. Yeah. Six. Yep. I, I don't have anything either. So, okay. Great. All right. Uh, anything else under new business, Mr. Gormley? I have two items. Um, the class of '98, the BHS class of '98, is having our reunion on. Oops, I forgot the date. It's the um, 24th of November, which is the Saturday after Thanksgiving at Barrett's Ale House in West Bridgewater. Um, tickets are available um, through our Facebook page. This is the Brock Knight Class of 98 reunion. Uh, it's kind of hard to find, but if you go to my Facebook page, you'll find it. Or you can email me at ward 4 at gmail.com. Uh, so we have a couple of days left to buy tickets. Um, the set second thing I have is um, something regarding athletics. Um, I have a, a statement that I'm going to read that is part of a formal complaint that I'm sending to the um, MIAA, which is um, the regulatory body for athletics in the state of Massachusetts um, for mostly public high schools. Um, so uh, over the last 20 years, I've watched student athletes in the city be lured away from Brockton High School by Catholic schools and uh, private schools, some that are in the MIAA, some that are not. Um, but in Rule 44.3 of the MIA handbook states, any attempts to place a student in a member school by any person for the purposes of enhancement of that athlete's athletic development or for increased exposure shall be, shall be deemed recruitment. Um, some schools, such as Catholic Memorial, have made it a practice to actively recruit Brockton players from our youth basketball and football leagues which while not a violation of the MIAA rules, I find it to be against the spirit of the MIA's mission and scholastic athletics in general. Catholic Memorial coach, uh, football coach, John DiBiaso built a dynasty in Everett, in Everett High School, in part by recruiting players, uh, many from Boston, which I coached uh, middle school football in Boston, and I witnessed the recruiting firsthand. Um, I had four players, taken on a recruitment trip to Everett High School, and one of them ended up uh, going there after playing at another high school. Um, and while student transfers within um, public schools are vetted through school choice or through residency, when a st uh, student transfers from a public school to a MIA Catholic school, there's no vetting. There's no safeguarding that these families are not being misled uh, for instance, if a school says clearly in their handbook that they do not service IEPs and a student who's a good athlete goes to the school and has an IEP, they're going to the school. Their IEP, according to the handbook, isn't being serviced. To me, that's a disservice to the child. Um, these schools have seen their enrollment declining, so they're using these athletes as a way to recruit other students. Uh, these students who are great athletes are mainly for, from urban areas. Um, and they're being used as props, as marketing tools, in my opinion. Um, in my time as a school committee member in Brockton, I've been fighting with the state to receive proper funding for our students. And during this time, these schools, such as Catholic Memorial, Zavarian, 
Boston College High School, St. John's Prep build multi-million dollar weight rooms just for athletics. Uh, practice facilities such as indoor um, practice facilities that house football fields um, and athletic fields that cost millions of dollars that you do not find on public school properties. Um, I don't fault them for their efforts to have top-notch facilities. Uh, everybody wants to do the best that they can for their students. Um, but I do find fault with the MIAA not finding a way to level the playing field for public schools, especially urban schools, because urban schools, as we all know, are going through a very tough time economically. Um, this is not exclusive to boys basketball and football. Uh, because of club sports, soccer, uh, male and female soccer students are being encouraged to not play for their high schools. Um, the same holds true for hockey and baseball. Um, because in AAU and club sports, uh, there's more exposure to certain uh, college recruiting. Um, so this has created a culture where student athletes feel that they are not up to par if they're not in one of these schools, which to me is a detriment to our kids in Brockton. And it's created a culture where our kids feel less than. And it's something that we have to deal with as Brocktonians all the time. People hear you're from Brockton and they think less of you. Not everybody, but you know we're fighting a, a, a reputation. Uh, and I'm tired of fighting that quietly, so I'm speaking up tonight. Um, it's time for the MIA to enforce their rules, and it's also time for them to adopt rules that help programs and not hinder them. Uh, it's time for them to loosen out-of-season regulations. Uh, students, student athletes are not allowed to participate in off-season workouts that are related to the sport uh, that involve equipment. They can do conditioning and other things. But in most other states, this is allowed. Um, and it's something that schools with large endowments are able to pay people and have people take their students to facilities uh, such as indoor soccer and indoor football f facilities in the off season and skirt the rules. We don't ha simply have the resources to do that in public schools and especially urban schools. Uh, since Brockton Heights High School won their last Super Bowl in 2005, one other public high school has won a Super Bowl championship in Division I that is a public school. The rest have been Catholic schools. Uh, Central Catholic, um, St. John's Prep, Boston College High School, to name a few. Um, this imbalance was noticed and addressed in baseball and hockey, and I don't think it's a coincidence that in baseball and hockey we have student, uh, we have parents of students who have means and agency to advocate for fairness. And in some sports, that is not the case. Um, so this needs to be addressed. We're labeling anyone, we're allowing anyone who labels himself a coach to guide our student athletes through the treacherous waters of high school and college recruiting. And to me, I would rather have somebody who is a public sc uh, school teacher or a vetted coach that works for a school system to be guiding these young people through this process. Uh, it can get very, very um, dirty, I, I guess you would say. Um, and we have people that are passionate and care about our kids in every school, but in, especially in urban schools, we need to be able to maintain these relationships with our student athletes throughout the season. And a school like Brock and I, that's hundreds of students. So I'm tired of seeing students being sold a dream instead of being told the truth. Um, and if you are around high school sports, you see a lot of students have their dreams overinflated by people who really are not qualified to guide them through that. So I requested that all Brockton High School teams not schedule Catholic Conference teams during the regular season. I urge all players who have had, all schools who have had players illegally recruited from their teams to do the same. We will not provide access or free advertising in our city as long as these practices continue. I'll be taking steps to ensure that ent entities encouraging Brockton students to attend non-Brockton public schools for the purposes of athletics will be denied denied access to our facilities. It's time to put Brockton first. Thank you, Mr. Gorman. Okay. Yes, we appreciate it. I agree, something has to be done. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a long time. This is a long time coming. Yep. And the MIA was always quick to watch what Brockton was doing in our heyday when we were winning a lot of championships, yep. they were 
always had us under the microscope. And they love to use our yep. facilities. Yep. Okay, anything else? I have a couple things. I want to just thank um, Brock, the Brockton High School students, um, the Student Council, National Honor Society, um, and the Box of Buddies for the Halloween, Halloween hallway. That was last um, Tuesday, um, the 30th. Um, we had over 600 um, elementary students attend. Um, it was packed. They had face painting, cookie decorating games, uh, as always, the Halloween hallway such a great event for the community and um, the Brockton High School teachers and uh, especially students do a great job putting it together. It's a lot of hard work, a lot goes into it. So we appreciate that. Um, I also want to say uh, on something that has been disturbing um, over the last week, um, there have been five children throughout the country that have been hit and killed while waiting for buses. Um, and it's been an issue. Um, three of these uh, young children were from, same, from the same family in Indiana uh, the day before Halloween. Um, and this had to do with um, drivers just ignoring the, the, the stop arm that comes out when the, um, the bus stops at a bus stop. As you know, the arm comes out, the stop, line, the stop sign comes out. And I've witnessed it, um, not only in Brockton, in several towns where you know, someone just tries to get by because they don't want to be held up for the three minutes it takes for the kids to get on the bus, so they try to jump that arm. And, um, and, obviously, and unfortunately, um, over the last week, five children have lost their life. So I want to remind drivers that um, when the school bus slows down and the lights start to flash, you really need to stop on both sides of the street. Um, you know, we have 9,000 students that take the buses to school, and we have 50 buses running throughout the city. As you know, the city's congested. The you know the streets can get packed with cars parking on both sides, and you know students are students and kids are kids. They run out um, sometimes without thinking when they see that uh, stop sign come out and the 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 you know the stop arm come out. They'll just go across the street and think they get on the bus. And when a car doesn't stop, obviously bad bad things can happen. So I just want to remind drivers to just you know when buses are out there and the stop. The flashing lights go on and the stop arm comes out, you, know, you need to really be careful and stop. Um, you know, and just, it, it can save a life and, you know, waiting three minutes is not a big deal. Um, so I just want to remind everybody about that. It's, a, it's important, it's a, it's a major safety issue. Uh, anyone else? Um, obviously we had Halloween, um, Halloween in the city. Um, the, Kids that came to my neighborhood were great. All of them very well behaved. Uh, I got a call from Dr. Appling, just reiterating the same thing. She wanted me to make sure I mentioned at the school committee meeting that uh, you know all the kids in her neighborhood were very polite and uh, uh, and very uh, creative with their costumes. So um, we always thank her for checking in with us. Um, um, I think we're also going to schedule a facilities meeting. Uh, before our next school committee meeting at 6.30 just to discuss some um, policies with regard to uh, rentals and, and rules to follow. So um, if everyone could be there for that, that would be good. Uh, anyone else? No? Okay. Uh, nothing with regard to executive session this evening. I do not believe unless someone sees a reason to go into executive session. No? Okay. Uh, Mr. Thomas, are you all set? I'm all set, thank you. All set? Commissioner Richards, could I just say one thing before you go? I just wanted to thank Brett because I didn't realize any of that was going on. And I can tell it took a long, a long time to put that speech together. And uh, I think we should support him 100%, all of us, mm -hmm. not just him. He did a good job with it. Mm-hmm. I agree. A nice job, Brett. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Anything else? I'll second his motion. All right. All right. Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Okay. We Thank are you. adjourned. Thank you.